With that, we will go through our process for a regular school board meeting. We'll start there, and then I will allow Mr. Klebe to get things rolling tonight, and I'll move right into the state of the schools as well. So at this time, Vice President Klebe. Thank you very much. As, as Dr. Thurman, Thurman said, since we have uh, three or more school board members here in order to comply with the Illinois Open Meetings Act, we have to call this together. So I'd like to call to uh, order the uh, special meeting of the Riverton Community Unit School District Number 14, uh, Board of Education. We'll call, please. Mrs. Apple. <laughs> Mr. Cleavy. Here. Mrs. Payne. Here. Mr. Nam. Mr. Powell. Ms. McKay. Ms. Hughes. Thank you for being with us this evening, ladies and gentlemen. I wanted to share um, some things this evening. To follow up, we had our first state of the schools address on September 15th, and taking a peek at the at the future and some of the items that uh, we looked at, I specifically looked at facing the district. And so we want to move into part two tonight and address some of the progress on those items. Um, in some areas, some of the more detailed realities that we have and also looking at in some areas shifting gears a little bit. Uh, next slide please. So in the first session we looked at this idea of rebranding Riverton and creating a new reality and creating a new marketing of who we are and what's important to the district and moving forward. And so in that vein we looked at three key areas, academics, technologies, and and finances that were key in this whole process of moving forward. And really the three main areas, when I considered the data we had, a lot of the conversations I had with ladies and gentlemen and faculty and the board coming into the district, these were areas that just continued to come up and up again. And to some extent, really even through strategic goal session that we had on Saturday, still our top areas of discussion for the district. Next slide, please. As a part of this process, and I didn't do a very good job on my graphics coming out, but as a part of this process, as we've gone forward together, as the board and I have begun this work in July, one of the things that has been a big topic is this idea of how the state, primarily through the legislature, enacts Overregulation would be my term for it, and act specific mandates that we're required to follow as school districts. And oftentimes, in our in our situation specifically for Riverton, the revenue, because of the current state economically in Illinois, the revenue is not following what those requirements are. And so, as a part of that challenge for all districts, you have a coalition that has developed with the Illinois Superintendents Association called the Illinois Association of School Administrators, the Illinois Association of School Boards, the Illinois Principals Association, the Illinois Association for Regional Superintendents of Schools. Uh, they have all banded together and they have developed this common voice, what's called Vision 2020. And in that, there are four key pillars which look at highly effective educators and the importance of being able to pull the best into education and train them. 21st century learning, which talks about not specifically technology, but providing the tools that students will need to be prepared for the 21st century, and obviously technology would be one of those tools. Shared accountability, which really starts to hit at the key piece, I believe, of this overall initiative, which is this idea of school boards, superintendents, principals, having a voice with the legislature. And the idea with the shared accountability is really pushing back on this concept of local control. There's been a significant erosion over arguably the last 20 years in that concept with all the overregulation that school districts face and this idea that the state is guiding more what happens in the Riverton School District, then we have an opportunity to guide what happens in the Riverton School District as its citizens and elected officials. And then finally, another key pillar of this is equitable and adequate funding. And the group actually does have a funding model that they support out of National Lewis University in Chicago, which is research-based. And it also discusses some parameters on setting a specific foundation level 
and then the state prioritizing that level and supporting it. To give you a little frame of reference on the funding piece, Riverton, the, the foundational level right now for all schools in Illinois is $6,119. Riverton receives a prorated amount of $5,400 yeah, $5, and a few odd dollars, which is about 89% of that. So we're not even receiving the statutorily required amount based on that number comes from a committee that is set up by the State Board of Education. So that piece there is, again, trying to attack that component of this. Next slide, please. Oops. There's all the graphics. Okay, as we look at our academic progress so far, what we are increasing for next year, advanced placement courses are an important part that I'm excited about as a superintendent, but also as a parent, because that, in effect, is your capstone course in a high school. Advanced placement is audited by the college board, so our teachers in advanced placement courses are required to present a syllabus. It has to be approved by the college board in order for students to be able to take an AP course here at the high school. And that equates to credit that you would have in a freshman level credit bearing course at a college. So we currently have in place an AP calculus course at the high school. Next year we'll be adding in or back in an AP US history course. So that's an improvement. We will also be adding a third science course. We'll be recommending this to the board as it goes through that process for feedback. So looking at the idea of students that are a freshman this year, that will be sophomores next year, will be required to take a third science course because what we're seeing as students need to be prepared for college with our current graduation requirements, a lot of students are stopping at your biology level about getting into chemistry or some of those other things because we don't require them to go that direction. And most of your colleges are looking for those courses on their transcripts for them to be successful in the college rigor, but also in the admissions process. We're also going through the curriculum alignment phase, and we have been able to go through based on best practice, based on standards that relate to a number of factors. Obviously, the advanced placement curriculum is very important in that process. We're looking at best practice information from the National Council of Teachers of Mathematics. We're considering information also from the Next Generation Science Standards. Uh, obviously, with what we're required to do um, with state testing, some of those pieces uh, come from the Common Core Standards. But again, that's a piece that we're looking at, and this local control part that we talked about before is so important because not all of us believe that every one of those components is absolutely the best way, and it might be, again, more of a combination of all of the above, the best way to educate our students. These two items, again, you've seen before, highly effective educators is one of the pillars from the Vision 2020 movement. National Board Certified Training, we are working right now with Illinois State in setting up, um, we're hoping to set up either a grade level or a building level project at the elementary school where teachers will be able to receive continuing education credits that they need at a very, very reasonable rate. And that, again, is a very, very high standard of development that we are in the negotiations process with Illinois State to provide very reasonably for our staff. Also, um, we'll talk a little bit in the technology piece about some iPads that we have been able to bring in through some grant funding and specifically as part of our technological planning at the K through two level, um, moving that technology in. And we have, through the Capital Area Career Center, an Apple trainer that uh, Mrs. Scheffler at the elementary school has been able to connect that. Once we start training our teachers, we'll be able to go through that for free. So those are items, again, we are looking at every possibility we can to find things inexpensively, or we've been very blessed to find a number of things for free. The next piece, 21st century learning, thank you, is again, that alignment piece is very important in that. We have to identify the pieces that our students are missing and our teachers are going through a very rigorous process on that that realistic, realistically will not likely culminate completely until the next year. 
to make sure that we have all those pieces aligned vertically and then horizontally as well. And, and again, as a parrot, those things excite me because those are the kind of things that I want to make sure that my children, in addition to all the district's children, have so that they're prepared for that next level when they go out into life. Next slide, please. Okay, this was some of the academic story we shared in the fall. You can see Riverton scores across the top, state average, and then the bottom, the ACT benchmarks. Those are what the ACT and colleges use. That means you have a 50% chance, if you have an 18, you're going to go into a college class with a 50% chance of achieving a C or higher, or 75%, or excuse me, 75% chance of a C or 50% of a B or higher. So in science, to have that level of rigor, you need to make sure that you score 23 if you want to feel confident based on that data that you're going to go in and have a chance to get a B grade if you have scored. Uh, also at the bottom, we use the measures of academic progress. This is an excellent tool. It's nationally normed, and when they did this, norming in 2011 was the last time they had updated the norm. They, they normed this across the country on 300,000 different students. And you should actually be receiving, your child should be receiving this information right now as we've gone through the winter testing and now that data is becoming available. And this information is there to provide for you as parents the idea of here's the kind of progress that my student's making. And so based on the grade level, you might see anywhere at the lower grades, you may see double digit improvement over the course of the year. Once you get up into the senior high level, it tends to become much smaller. You might see one or two points over the course of the year. But that shows you that piece, and it also shows you where does that score relate to grade level across the country for my student. So we look at that in mathematics, and we look at that in reading. And again, these are important pieces the district has invested in, and, and these are very solid metrics. So again, these are encouraging things that we continue to use and that we will continue to support. Next slide, please. In the area of technology, we've talked about the idea of we've updated iPads. We've specifically looked at the needs across the district from kindergarten through that high school piece. And one of the big areas that we, that we found was in that K through two level, this idea of students and this tablet experience, it's an app world. Most of our students that are coming in at that kinder grade, kindergarten grade level have a significant amount of experience with apps and we need to be able to engage that technology. And so we were fortunate to be able to write part of our Title I grant to address that. And so those iPads will be coming in for an implementation March 1st. Also, in looking at differentiated instruction, uh, Lexia is a very strong research-based intervention and curriculum that takes students all the way from uh, phonemic awareness all the way through reading comprehension. And that's something we're using in grades K through four. In developing long-range plans, this is another uh, blessing for us. We've been able to connect with Community Consolidated District 59, which is Arlington Heights. They are a majority minority district. They also have similar poverty demographic with us. What they have that we don't is the largest industrial complex in North America in their district because they're a part of that O'Hare Airport area. Uh, through uh, an acquaintance I had with the University of Illinois, I was able to work with their superintendent and thankfully, he's going to pro bono their super assistant superintendent for technology to work with our team as we continue to look at long-range planning and this idea they've gone through very successfully in laying out what students need to be able to do in bringing all the decisions for devices, for infrastructure, and all that into that process instead of kind of the backwards model of that where, hey, we've got a device and we'll just cover the things we wanted to in the end. Um, one item that we're still looking at and, and that we need to work to address is this idea of access to the internet anywhere. It's on, teachers have it, it's fired up, it doesn't take seven minutes to load up your computer. And that's an infrastructure challenge that we have that's, that's pretty major. 
And that will be part of what we're looking at this semester. And again, those items really tie into that 21st century uh, learning component of Vision 2020. Okay, next slide. This is just an example for you of uh, Community Consolidated Districts 59 web, that's their website. That's just an example. They were one of six districts selected from Illinois to go and talk with the president recently about educational technology because they're considered to be that strong in the area. So I just wanted to show that up there for those of you folks that have been on our website recently. You can see some of the differences and some of the things that we are looking at towards the future. I think one exciting piece about this type of technology is they don't have an item on their website that you cannot find with more than five clicks. Everything is five clicks or less. So again, we're fortunate we have the opportunity to work with these folks at no cost to the district. Okay, as we look at that future piece in technology, infrastructure is quite an obstacle for us right now, and that's becoming a very key piece that we will need to address. We are also looking at that idea of redesigning the district website so it's much more user-friendly and much more functional uh, for folks to re receive the information and the updates than what we currently have. An item that's changing for us on the financial side is E-rate is a legislative uh, appropriation, basically, that has funded the communication side of technology. So currently in the Riverton District, we're subsidized quite a bit through e rate for our phones and, and what we do with ATT and the Illinois uh, Computer Network. So that will be changing for sure in the next one to five years that we will not be receiving money for that. So again, these are items that we're looking at in that infrastructure. Does it make sense now to update those phone pieces? Next slide, please. Financial, um, as far as state funding, we lose. I don't know of any other way to put that. I wish I could sugarcoat it, but as, as we continue to look at that in the district office and have a lot of discussions with the board, this is probably one of the things that is so discouraging for us because no matter what we try, it doesn't seem to even come close. We've already talked about foundational level 6119. To put that in perspective from the fall state of the schools, our average per capita per pupil expense is $8,046. That's an amount that our independent audit firm sets up on here's basically what we pay to educate a student the way we want. So the foundational level isn't even what we would provide as a Rivers and School District, and we only receive $5,400 out of that. Now as part of that whole process, that general state aid and mandated categorical payments we would receive in areas like special education or transportation, our average loss the last four years has been 530000 That is a big part of our financial dilemma, and it's the fact that the state doesn't have the money, and they're not able to provide that to schools. Okay, um, we are in a process of deficit spending. Our, our current deficit is $870,000. An item that has come up a lot since July in my discussions, and even was part of our strategic goal discussion on Saturday, is this idea of a balanced budget. And I just wanted to bring up, again, for kind of a frame of reference this evening, is when we talk about a balanced budget, and then we start to have discussions with folks, I see a couple of different things, and I want to try to clarify this tonight in case folks have questions. If we were going to try and balance the budget for next year, when you look at where we are now, 870,000, if we anticipate, okay, it's likely that last average 530,000, we're looking at 1.4 million to balance the budget. If we cut all of our extracurricular activities, every one, and all of our fine arts activities, that would only be 400,000. We're not even halfway yet. So when we have these discussions, and, and as I'm communicating with the board, and when I talk with people in person, I think well, while we all understand that idea and that ideal, I think the reality is we want to decrease the amount of deficit we have. I don't know that there's any good way for me as a superintendent to recommend to the board, hey, we're going to balance the budget right now. Because what we would do to the district would be so dramatic 
that I think it would really, we would run the risk of losing a lot of interest in our community. So as we look at that piece, we are still working to decrease that deficit as our priority and to create efficiencies wherever we can. And again, those tie into some of those uh, pillars of the Vision 2020. Next slide, please. Here's just an example. Now, in addition to these being our figures, we have had Brent Pell, who works for the State Board of Education as a financial expert, come in and run these numbers as a double check to Mr. Gum and myself in the office. And th this is what he comes up with as well. So you can see right now, fiscal year 2015, here's where we are. And projecting out where we are, if we don't change anything, you'll see our revenues continue to decrease. And unfortunately, the cost of educating students continues to go up and up and up. So again, if we don't change anything now, it's just projected that we'll see that area widen. And that's, that's what we're trying to fight against when we talk about decreasing that deficit piece. Next slide, please. Um, I have shared some inform information with the school board and have reflection uh, from the board members, from the board meetings, also folks that have been at uh, the board meetings and, and community members that have called. And we are looking generally, and the board will have the final say whether we do some of these things or not, but we're looking generally at $212,000 worth of personnel decreases next year in the time people may work and the, the amount of personnel we have, that's an item that we're looking at. Also, we're looking at the elimination of some bus routes and there's a dollar figure related to that. Uh, again, as I, I live over here on Beverly Hills Drive and as I drive in the morning, we have some students that are transported to school that it's a very short distance. And so again, these are things we're looking at. What can we do to improve the efficiency and it's still not completely destroy the services we have. Another item that I brought up to the board was looking at the idea of making some cost reductions in extracurricular activities. As we've gone through that process, there were some, some questions on behalf of the board, uh, some questions on members of the community, and some ideas that they want us to really explore in further detail as opposed to just cutting programs out. So as we look at the next year, that's part we're going to back up and look at some of these different ideas on possibilities of parents transporting students to games, on looking at the idea of is it possible to have a graduated fee schedule. So for example, if, if my child is involved in the most expensive sport we offer, I'm paying more than what um, Tracy's child may pay if they're in the least expensive sport we offer. We've got all that information. Here's what it costs to do everything. So we will.